is my turn, and I am really pale, but um, I, I, I think it's an incredible account about Russ and his family. Um, I, I will say this, I, I, I was, I'm so amazed because he has an incredible work ethic. And the second thing I, I was, I think he's probably the poster boy for multitasking because I called him today and he answered the questions for me and all the time he was checking, uh, print checking dairy cows. So I don't know how many people could do that. Uh, his forebears were really important people. I, I mean, in this respect, they contribute a lot to the agriculture of business in Kern County. And first of all, his, his grandfather, Howard K. Dixon was, you might say, the Dean of Agricultural Teachers in Kern County at Bakersfield High School and was instrumental in getting the fair started and taught from 1922 till the early 60s. His dad, Robert S. Dixon, was uh, an excellent veterinarian in Kern County and uh, worked at Bakersfield Vet. Uh, Russ himself uh, went to well, in the early days, he was in the 4-H, he was an FFA, and he went, attended uh, West High School, where he wrestled, uh, and I don't know where he had his spare time. He also had a little herd of uh, Guernsey, uh, Guernsey cattle that he showed at the fair and did various uh, cattle shows. He was in the Panama 4-H, and I'd love to know what he ever did with his spare time, but anyway, I thought this was really interesting, and you don't hear much of this, but during the time he was there at, well, let me just say this, he wrestled at, at West High, he wrestled at BC, and he wrestled for a bit at Davis. But I think when you, when you go to Davis to become a veterinarian, you find out you don't have much time to do anything else but study. And, uh, but I, I was amazed at the fact that he had a little dairy, herd of dairy heifers that he sold, and it helped to finance his career at Davis. Um, he... Uh, by the way, he graduated in 1971, and that's a significant date for me uh, to kind of mention a little bit later on. Uh, <laughs> he uh, went to BC and majored in animal physiology and then uh, applied at Davis, went to Davis and uh, applied for the vet school and was accepted in his junior year, which is really a little bit early. Most of the time people get their bachelors and then apply. But it, it testifies to the fact that he worked hard and he was really smart. Um, and during that time, uh, he met the love of his life, Sue Granger, in his last year at vet school. And then uh, they were married at, uh, when he graduated and went to work in Gilroy as a, as a large animal vet and a small animal vet. And then from there, they were there a year and they moved to Cotati. Cotati, I think, is that how you Cotati. say it? Cotati. And I gotta ask, I'd like a show of hands of all the people that know where Cotati is. <laughs> I didn't know, you were way ahead of me, but it's up by Santa Rosa and Petaluma, and I think that's kind of the location, isn't it? Okay, and for, he was there for a year, and then the pool of the old home folks here, the people he knew, Kern County, and I think all of you know that you live here while it's a great place to live. It's a great place to do business. I love the, uh, in it, the livestock industry, mainly because of the people you work with. But uh, he, is, he worked for a couple of, worked with a couple of vets for a year or so, and uh, that was Mike Kerfoot and Joe, uh, Joe Dendy. And then in 1983, he became a sole practitioner, then established his own vet service, and currently has, uh, six other vets besides himself, Maureen uh, Hyman, uh, Lauren Huggins, Jeff uh, James, and Jordan Boniface, and uh, another one, right? Frank Martin. He's a partner. And Lou Down. Okay, and Lou. Okay. Anyway, and I, I forgot to mention it, all the time during his really hard work and establishing his practice, he was this boy's scout master. He helped him in uh, 4-H and uh, was a 4-H leader in, in the Panama 4-H. And I just thought there, that's a really dedicated dad and great to have raised the kids he did. 
And I forgot to mention it in their first year in Galroy that their daughter Megan was born. And then after they moved to Bakersfield, the other three children, uh, Megan, then Megan, and then uh, Robert, and then Callie, and John. And John, I think, is a veterinarian here. Yeah. Um, so actually, uh, I just thought he's done a, a, a great job in influencing his family, his youth, and so on. And I, I was kind of amazed in some of the things that he did as a young man. I think this one little incident sort of testifies to the fact that maybe there's a little, um, how do you say it, an air of youthful vulnerabil invulnerabil invulnerability, indestructibility. <laughs> he flew up to uh, Carver Bowen's ranch to do some preg checking. I remember flying into the Sierra Nevada mountains with its canyons, boulders, and brush. Uh, you have to be a little bit uh, of a daredevil, I think, to do that. <laughs> but anyway, on the way home, and we got home, he, he happened to so touch a brush, uh, some brush or a tree, and it bent, <laughs> it bent his, uh, his right wing, I think, it was, <coughs> for about three feet. But he still made it home. He's here today. <laughs> and uh, so I think that's just something that, uh, uh, like I said, I'm going to address that aspect of it a little bit. Uh, a little bit later on, he had made three comments to me over the time we talked. And, uh, but another event happened while he was up in Nevada at uh, TS Ranch with John Beard. And they preg checked all day and uh, getting ready to go. And they uh, had a, there, there had been a, lo a loaded cow truck. John was sending, I'm not sure who was sending it. John could tell you. But anyway, he looked over and uh, the truck was crossing a railroad track. and. Uh, I think it was going about 80 miles an hour, and uh, John heard Russ say, he's not going to make it, and he didn't, and he sliced that truck, the train sliced the truck right in half, and uh, now John said it killed everything, not the driver, the driver wasn't scratched, and neither was the tractor or the truck, it just cut it right in half, left the duels, left the two axles in the back, uh, sitting by himself. But uh, Russ says that a few did make it. But anyway, I thought that's that's one of those things that a person and you know your, your veterinarians and your preg checking and healing and rocking, it's always going to be a little bit maybe unusual. But the, the, there's three comments he made to me when I first called him up. I said, you know, your dad was the first vet I ever hired in Kern County. He says. Boy, you've been around a long time. <laughs> I got to thinking, you know, you graduated in 1971, I graduated in 1952, that's 19 years. So that sounds to me, John, uh, Russ, like you are eligible for, what he say, to eat off the senior menu at Denny's? <laughs> you can join ARP, and I'll throw you in on this. Since uh, you've been dealing with young people, I'm sure that you're eligible for uh, <clears throat> geezerhood too. <laughs> now, the, the second comment he made is, "Are you guys running out of cattlemen? That you you want me to be a cattleman here?" <laughs> well, let me say this, yeah. and I'm very serious about that. The vets are such an integral part of our business. We can we couldn't stay in business if profitable without you both for the vaccinations, the advice on vaccinations. Do you stand between us and, how do you want to say, uh, a lot of well-meaning people would like to, how do you say, legislate enough that it wouldn't be very profitable to run. Uh, the next thing I was gonna say, I, I hope you'll forgive us and stay being a vet for us, but uh, I know that you've had to put up with it a time or two when you got there, we were supposed to start at six and we were still tuckering up the corral at 7.30 and you helped us, help us prop up a panel or two and nail a board. And then uh, the other kind of a thing that maybe isn't perhaps the most appetizing, but just people still do it, the vets don't, don't seem like they ever wrinkle their nose up or throw their hands up, is we ride out and see 10 dead heifers in a field. And this is about the sec second day after this happened. And we call you up and want to have you do a postmortem. You still do it, come and do it and tell us what we have to do. And so that in itself, I think, tells you that a veterinarian is definitely eligible to be Cattleman of the Year. And the third thing he made, a comment 
he came to pull a calf for me, I guess that's probably about 15 years ago. I don't know if he remembers it or not, probably didn't near the town I live in. But anyway, after his doll done, and get this, now he's probably running 24-7, pretty tired. He says, boy, next time I think I'm going to be a real doctor. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if, whenever you have another chance but anyway <laughs> I have to cancel that out on it because I don't know of any profession that has so much diversity in it in what they have to know they have to know about what do you say the herbivore they have to know about the carnivore the, and the omnivore the pig the cow and the horse they have to all the physiology of that you have to know the diseases like that and so with all the things that you do, all the things you can do, I'd say you are the real doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs>